Down throw. Can we get the up tilt? Yes, we do. So a lot of... Something that I notice a lot of pit players end up doing, dark pit, regular pit, doesn't matter, is that they'll jump at almost every time that they get hit, right? So we're hit. What's up guys, JTails here for another video, and I am back from vacation. It feels good to be back. I've been reading through the comments, and a lot of you guys have been asking for me to play Rob. So I figured I can do that in tournament mode for you guys. Um, I will be making those anti-character guides. I just need a second person to demonstrate some things. So while I sort that out, I'll be giving you some grand blue content and Smash Ultimate, Elite Smash, and five tips to win. So let me know in the comments what you want to see next on those series, and I'd be happy to do that for you. Let's get right into it, shall we? Alright, I think this is a 16-man bracket. Yes, I can count. Let's do it. We're going up against a Kirby first. Now, I think that this has always been a traditionally bad matchup for Kirby. Um, but let's see, maybe... What is this username that I'm up against? It's, uh... 6 Junior 76 OP. Okay, maybe this guy knows something I don't, so let's see what happens. I'm gonna open up with a laser, because that's the Rob classic. Okay, dodge right into that one. Okay. So notice how I'm, I'm kind of using a lot of uh, Nairs. Even though, if people parry the Nair, they can punish you. So it's not a be-all, end-all option. Um, your opponent just has to be really good at parrying in order to make something happen with that. Oh, nice! <laughs> he just ate it. Gonna throw him off stage, try to snipe him. Yep. Okay, he's going really high. Okay, nice block. No snipe. So he likes to go for the really high up, um, up B, which I guess can have its uh, uses, but I may be able to punish it. Okay. Gonna go for the rock. No jump. He's at 191. All I need to do is grab him, you guys. And then we can just up throw. That's gonna be a sock. <laughs> um, but yeah, this Kirby really opts to go very, very... Wow, I didn't think he would time that, actually. Um, <laughs> it's all good. Oh, God. Okay. Keeps jumping. So we know he's gonna keep jumping. Yes, and we can start trading with that. Right? So notice how I, I made... Okay, he's gonna do it into me. Notice how I made an adjustment there. Things weren't working out. He was like kind of recovering for free every time uh, by going... Yeah! <laughs> by going really high and then eventually I caught on to, you know, his pattern, his habit, and we adjusted our gameplay, right? I think that's a really big thing. Kind of like seeing what pattern your opponent's doing. Everybody has a pattern no matter how good you are. And then figuring out what tools you have to beat those strategies, right? So I know my up air hits really high up. So since the Kirby's up B only hits in front and above it, I can go from under him and beat him out that way. So that was a really good, really basic example of adaptation. Obviously, most of the examples are a lot more subtle, but I'm going to jump because he's going to throw an arrow. And notice how I angled my laser in the other direction, right? So if I had thrown the laser at him straight, uh, he would have been able to reflect it. Oh, there's a double jump, but we don't get a punish. So if I would have thrown my laser at him like just straight, he would have been able to reflect it right back at me. But since I was coming from an angle, he would have reflected it and then I would have avoided. Right? Because, ooh, almost. Nice dodge. Back throw. Late little laser. Nope. Yeah, that would have worked, or side B probably would have worked. So we're at 15%. Pretty solid. I'm gonna try and catch that gyro. Okay. 
Down throw. Can we get the up tilt? Yes, we do. So a lot of... Something that I notice a lot of pit players end up doing, dark pit, regular pit, doesn't matter, is that they'll jump at almost every time that they get hit, right? So we're hit... Ooh! We're hitting him and he's like jumping multiple times every time, right? And that's something that I talk about in my bad habits video. If you haven't seen that yet, definitely check it out. But every time I, I got a hit on him, I knew he was going to keep mashing that jump button. So I knew what his position was going to be. And I was able to get up airs and back airs on him, which really kind of helped me out. So we are over in winner semis of this tournament, doing pretty well for ourselves. Um, if you guys are enjoying this video, please hit that thumbs up button, I would greatly appreciate it. And consider subscribing to the channel if this is your first time here. A lot of my videos are very analytical and I try to explain my thoughts as much as possible. Looks like we're up against Robin in the semis, Greninja and Ridley on the other side. I would kind of rather fight Ridley, but I feel like Greninja is going to really body him. But we'll see, maybe he can clutch it out. Not a good matchup for Ridley. So we're going to open up with a laser. I think this Robin player kind of knows that. Okay. Nice. No buffered up tilt here. So we're respecting that back air, right? Um, Robin's back air is... Whoa. Okay, we don't want to be above Robin because then we start getting juggled. Which is not the move for us. Nice. Notice how Robin is jumping above my uh, gyro and laser, right? Oh. Wow, the double spike! First hit did not actually pan out for us, but the second one did. Okay, no up tilt for me. I'm gonna go low here. Okay, Thoron on deck. This Robin is trying to make a comeback. Big damage. A lot of damage. So... Yeah, so, um, that Levin's... Ooh, Thoron, we block it just narrowly. Yep, a pr falling into me a little bit too much. I gotta roll. If you get Arc Fired on, you're gonna get comboed and maybe even killed. So be very careful with Arc Fire when you're fighting Robin. That's the one move you really want to avoid. Yep. Need to just kind of go off stage and respect my advantage, Robin. Oh, nice Arc Fire covering the ledge, protecting herself. Uh, Arc Thunder is not going to hit. And that's going to be my stock. Alright, 121. I think we can do it as long as we don't get Rage killed. Double jump? No double jump. Smart stuff. Okay. Yep, that Gyro is going to control space. Wow, did not change the ledge option. I'm really surprised to see that. Got rid of the Thoron. Unfortunate. Yeah, so this player... I put the gyro there. They got up, they got hit by it. I put it there again. And they did forward get up again. Tw like, three times, right? So, I kind of just figured... Alright, maybe this player isn't going to mix it up. And I can punish their ledge get up. That forward get up. And get the KO. And that's exactly what happened. They didn't mix it up. And that really hurt them in the end. Um, I was expecting them to mix it up. But after the second time that they didn't. I was like okay. Maybe they're not going to do it the third time. Mix it up. So let me try and punish that. And then I was able to do it. Okay so Greninja. Really good against big bodies. People with big hurt boxes. Combo fiend of a character. So I'm ready to take a lot of damage. And I know that I'm going to have to kill Noah at like 120. And I'm going to have to try to survive, uh, despite getting hit a lot. Down air? No down air. Trying to opt for the back air there. Okay, I'll take that trade. So, notice how I'm just really creating my space against Greninja. I'm really just walling him out, right? Every time Greninja's approaching me, I have something in the way, right? Like, whether it's my fair or my gyro. It's going to use side B. There it is. Okay, does roll from the ledge and we catch the jump. You can't actually jump out of that setup, um, no matter who you are. Nice back here. Okay, jab lock. Got the combos down. Unfortunately, didn't convert. So once again, I'm kind of just walling out this Greninja. I kind of have to, right? Because if Greninja touches me once, I'm going to explode and take so much damage and so much um, 
yeah, just the combos that Greninja can can put out are ridiculous. Air dodges right into me. Where's the side B? There it is. Wow. That angle. So I really put Greninja in a bad position by setting up the gyro and like making them recover from an awkward angle. I think that they could have chilled out a little bit longer and either gone very, very low or gone high, right? And I would have still gone for that down air because I didn't know what direction they were going to choose. So I was... I put my down air in the spot that was going to take up the most space and the most likely where Greninja was going to pass by. But Greninja could have gone above it or like let himself fall lower and then like go under it, right? Wait for it to finish and then go past it. But I that was a really lucky down air. I didn't expect that one to even hit. Um, but uh, yeah, so some matchups... You can box with other characters and, and get in their face, depending on your range and your moves. And other matchups, characters are just going to have better frame data and and range than you and combos. So you kind of have to keep those away, right? Like Ryu and Ken and Terry, you do not want to fight them up close. Their, their damage is too good. They KO you at like 70, right? So there's no point in ever trying to fight them up close, right? But characters like... Donkey Kong and Samus and um, their buttons aren't that great up close like in their face so you want to rush them down and really pressure them. Corrin might be another example right? So anyway guys if you enjoyed this video and you feel like you learned something from watching definitely hit that subscribe button. I really want to put out tons of more different types of content for you guys and I appreciate you guys as always being here. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all next time.